Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and this is video number three in my bank reconciliation statement series. If you've missed any of the previous videos, I'm gonna put a card up there with a link to the playlist that contains the previous videos, and you should also find the link down in the description below. In this video, I'm gonna focus on how to prepare a bank reconciliation statement, starting with the updated cash book balance. Now, this is different to how I showed it previously, um, which is starting the bank rec statement using the bank statement balance. And the truth is, most of the CSEC past paper questions ask you to do the bank rec starting with the updated cash book balance. And in some cases, you don't even get the bank statement balance to know if you've done it correctly. Anyhow guys, so I'm gonna jump into an example and we're just gonna hit it running. Okay, okay guys, so this is um, the, what you're seeing on the side. This is my the handle that I created for my use of my class to teach this particular part of the topic. So you can pause and take a read, I'll summarize. So what I say is that I don't actually know why we would need to do a, a bank rec starting with the updated cash flow balance um, because it implies almost that you don't have the bank statement. But if you don't have the bank statement, how could you update the cash book? Anyhow, I don't wanna get too much into that. Let's just say, look, it's a skill that I'd rather you have and then not need to use it then you don't have it and you need to use it, okay? And like I said, and you can see there too, a lot of CSEC questions are structured like this. So let's take a read of the example. So it says the cash book shows an ending debit balance, ending debit balance of 5,000, okay? Remember a debit balance is regular for the cash book because the cash book is an asset and assets usually have debit balances. We know that the cash book could have a credit balance in the bank column because of an overdraft. If, you not, if you're not sure what an overdraft is, go and take a look at the previous videos. Look for the link in the description below. Right? Okay, now, bank charges are 1,000 standing orders, total 2,000 unpresented checks amount to 6,000 and bank lodgements total 5,000. So once again, if you are familiar with the content from the previous videos, you would know that bank charges and standing orders, those are items found in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So therefore, those are the items that we will use to update the cash book. The unpresented checks and bank lodgements, those things are found in the cash book, but not in the bank statement, and hence we use them in the bank rec. Um, and what you'll also notice is that there is no, no bank statement balance given. So what do we do? Well, the first thing is sort out what you can do, as in don't let what you don't know how to do mess or interfere with what you know how to do. Don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can. We can update the cash book. So let's start there. So we're gonna start by putting in the balance, um, right? Balance brought down 5,000. And we have two items, both bank charges and standing orders are payments. They'll both go on the credit side. And uh, now we just, we simply have to find the, close, the new closing balance. So this side totals to 3,000, so we're gonna need a balance of 2,000 being carried down. Um, sorry, yeah, balance brought down uh, 2,000. Okay, so we have a new updated cash book balance. So how does this work in terms of the bank rec? Well, you start with the balance as per updated cash book. Now, normally we would minus unpresented checks. If we start with the bank statement balance, so once again, let's use my hands as a thing, right? So. When you pay checks to people, remember they have to carry those checks to the bank for the bank to give them your money. But if they do not present the checks for payment, the bank will not give them your money, so the money will stay in your account, your bank account. But when you write the check, you credit your cash book. So cash book, bank statement. When you write the check and you pay it, your cash book goes down. Your bank statement balance doesn't go anywhere until those checks are presented and the money is transferred. So normally I would say, from your bank statement in the bank rec, you subtract the unpresented checks in order to bring your cash book and bank, bank, bank cash book, sorry, cash book and bank statement balance in line. However, the alternative is to add the unpresented checks back to the cash book balance to bring it back up, right? So that's what's gonna happen there. In this case now in the bank rec, because we are starting with the updated cash book balance. Similarly, for bank lodgements, so our bank lodgement is money Checks, right? Checks that you've put into the bank, whether it's the ATM or the teller, that have not yet processed. And what I mean by that is that the money had from, from whoever wrote you the check, the money hasn't been transferred from their account to your account. Now, when you get the check, so once again, cash book, bank statement. When you get a check, you will debit your cash book because debits increase assets. So your cash book balance went up. 
but your bank statement balance didn't go anywhere because the money didn't hit your account yet. So normally what we would do, if we start the bank rec with the bank statement balance, we would add the bank lodgement figure to bring the cash book balance and the bank statement balance in line. However, the alternative is to subtract those bank lodgements from the updated cash book balance to bring those back in line. So it's either you could increase the bank statement balance or decrease the cash book balance. So that's what has to happen here. So once again, it's just that you are reversing the addition and subtraction in terms of those particular items, all right? So let's see how it looks. So add unpresented checks, right, 6,000, and less bank lodgements. And you can say put those words in capital letters for them to stand out, all right? So two and six is eight, eight minus five will give us 3,000. So here, we, sorry, what is going on? Right, so here we have determined that our bank statement balance is 3,000 by doing, by first of all, updating the cash book, and then by doing a bank reconciliation statement, starting with the updated cash book balance. And basically what we're doing is we're, in, like I said, in an effort to create symmetric information, or is it symmetrical? I should notice, you know, in order to create a situation where both of the statements have the same information, what we do is we take the info from the bank statement and put it inside a here, cash book, that the cash book didn't have. And then after, we're going to take out the information the cash book didn't have, right? Sorry, the cash book had that the bank statement didn't have. So we're going to make them look the same, right? It's like um, a story of a friend of mine who he just got his license. Uh, this is some years ago, by the way, right? He just got his license. And his parents had bought a new car for him. And they said, hey, what? You could go and pick up the car and bring it home for us, right? So he said, yeah, no problem. So he's feeling nice. They drop him off there. And they went to make some groceries. So, you know, so my friend took the car, drive do all kind of thing, right? Took a joy right on the way home now. So you reach home, nothing happened in the car. When opening the gate and reversing into his yard, he scratched the front right fender. Now, the thing is, the way his gate and his fence were set, the, the, the scrape was three perfectly parallel lines on, on the fender itself. And it, it, looked, it looked neat enough to almost look like a design um, on the car. And he was like, wait now. If they see that on one side, they're going to think I scratched, they're going to know I scratched the car. And I don't have enough time to go down to the shop and let them paint it over and I don't have that kind of money. So guess what he did? Turn the car around and he scraped the other side. So it was matching. So that's kind of what's going on here, right? Instead of fixing the other side, they kind of, instead of fixing the scrapes, they are scraping the other side. So that's kind of what's going on here. Anyhow, I hope that example didn't throw you off too much. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to scroll down here. And what I want you to do is you can pause the video on this table down here, right? So this tells you what to do in bank recs, what to add and what to subtract, whether you're starting with the bank statement balance or whether you're starting with the updated cash book balance, right? So I invite you to pause the video, copy that down because it's going to be helpful going forward. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is let's, let's, um, let me just change what's on my screen and we are going to try a question. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at a, at a fresh question. So this is a practice question three from, uh, so it says Santa Claus cash book showing, shows a closing debit balance for his bank account of $1,500. Okay, so debit balance is a regular balance in the cash book. So bank charges are 600, direct credit transfers total 900, unpresented checks total eight, and bank lodgements are 700. Okay, so this is the, closing debit balance. So let's put that in first, right? 1500. Whoops. Right. So the bank charges and the, the direct credit transfers, those are items that will be found in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So what we need to do is update the cash book. So we're going to put um, direct credit transfers, uh, 900. And then on this side, we're going to put bank charges. We're going to put, how much is it? 600? Okay. So now when we total up this side, we're going to have 2,400 here, which obviously will be the total on that side. And the updated cash book balance is 1,800. So we're going to bring that down here. Balance broke down, 1,800. Cool. So we put balances per cash book here in the bank rec. So once again, we're starting the bank rec with the updated cash book balance. Now, what do we do? So we go back up here and we have the unpresented checks totaling 800 and bank lodgements totaling seven. So normally when we start the bank rec with the bank statement balance, we add bank lodgements and subtract unpresented checks. 
Now, because we're starting with the updated cash flow balance, we reverse the logic. So we're going to add unpresented checks. Unpresented checks. Uh, how much was that? 800. And we are going to minus or less the bank lodgements. Uh, right, cool. Uh, which is how much? 700. Right, so 8 minus 7 is 1. 18 and 1 is 1900. Right, simple and straightforward. So let's scroll down to try another question. Right, so that was Santa Claus. This is um, Mrs. Claus. So her cash book shows a closing debit balance for her bank account of 2000 Okay, so let's put that in, 2000 Oh, oh wait, sorry, by the way, you know what? You can pause and try this. Right? Pause and try this, and then unpause it. Did you try it? Don't cheat, try it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, so we have a standing order for rent. Um, 1500 direct deposits by customers, 18 and bank charges of 5 Okay. So standing order for rent, so standing order rent, we're going to put 1500 uh, Then we have the direct deposits. Yes, how much is that? 1800 okay. And then we have the bank charges, oops, sorry. Charges, right, 500 Okay, so this the debit side clearly has um, a bigger total. Uh, this side will need 1800 because that's 2000 yeah so that's the new balance carried down so that's the updated cash book balance oops carry down sorry my apologies all right so 3800 balance brought down of 1800 okay cool so now in your bank rec you're going to start with that 1800 and we have unpresented checks totaling 1200 and bank lodgements totaling 3000 so once again we add unpresented checks and minus bank lodgements because we are starting with the updated cash book balance. Now you could put less bank lodgements first. It doesn't matter. Less bank um, lodgements, 3,000. Um, we're going to add the unpresented checks, uh, which are how much? 1,200? Well, would you look at that? Um, 1,800 and 1,200 is 3,000. So you actually have no money in your bank account. <laughs> As in, it's a, it's a flat zero. <laughs> okay. All right, so like I said, so some of these questions is just to give you a little taste. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little pause here. I'm gonna switch to a different question and it's gonna be the last question and then we're gonna wrap up. Okay. Okay guys, so here we have a slightly more involved question. As you can see, it um, has, a little, has a few paragraphs. So let's take a read. Okay, so where's my cursor? Okay, there we go. So decorations, boy. Cash book, or I should put an apostrophe here, right? All right, so her cash book or his cash book shows a closing debit balance in her account, sorry, of 21,000. So it's a regular bank balance. So she has received her bank statement. However, while it was in the mailbox, it got wet. And when she opened it, she accidentally destroyed the part that showed her closing bank balance. Oh, okay. So she was able to gather all the other information from it and now wishes to update her cash book and prepare her bank reconciliation statement to deduce her closing bal bank balance, right? So this, is, this seems like a, a reasonable scenario, I suppose, <laughs> right? Where you would need to start the bank reconciliation statement with the updated cash book balance. So the information from the bank statement was as follows. So we have standing order for monthly insurance. Hey, you know what? Let's, let's just put this information in as we go along. So we're going to start with the balance, balakni, right? Balance brought down. Where's my slash, right? Of 21,000 in the cash book. So, right, so let's go. So, standing order. So, a standing order is a payment made on our behalf. Payments decrease the balance in the cash book payment, and therefore it goes on the credit side because credits decrease assets. So, standing order for insurance. How much is it? 3,000? Cool. Uh, next, we have direct deposits into bank account by customers. So, when customers put money in our bank account, it increases. To record increases in the cash book, we debit the cash book because assets increase with debits. So direct deposits. Deposits, how much? 18,000. 18, wow. All right, next. Checks returned by the bank with, with the statement stamped NSF. So in the previous video, we learned, we learned about NSF checks. So NSF stands for not sufficient funds. In other words, it's a bounced check. The person who gave us the check to pay us did not have enough money in his or her account to cover the check. Therefore, the check was not honored, it was dishonored, 
and the bank sent it back to us saying, hey, this person didn't have enough money in their account. So when we first got the check, we would have debited the cash book in anticipation of getting money. But we didn't get the money. So guess what we have to do? We have to undebit the cash book. What I mean by that is we have to go on the credit side and put an amount, uh, an entry for the same amount showing that, hey, look, we have to cancel that debit. Okay, so we're going to put um, NSF checks. Oops, did not, did that WD come from, boy? 2,500. <clears throat> well, if you all hand a dog back, and that's just my, my brother's dog outside, uh, she barks at everything. Okay, so then we have bank charges for the month, 1,500. So bank charges are decreased again, so we're gonna put bank charges here, and that's gonna be 1,500. Okay, so it looks to me like this side is gonna have the, the bigger total, 39,000. And I think I could take out one of these things here, right. So we're gonna have um, balance carried down. So that's gonna give us 4,000, that's seven, so I think that's 32. Right. If my arithmetic is off, please let me know in the comments. It would be quite embarrassing if I have to go and re-upload the video if it really was off. Balance brought down, 32,000. Speaking of that, let me check it again. So 20, 1 and 18 is 39, <laughs> right? Um, 25 and 15 is 4,000, 4,000 and 3 is 7. 7 from 39 is 32. Okay, good. Always check over your work. Don't take things for granted. Trust, trust me on that. <laughs> I've made that mistake enough times, right? Okay, so now we're going to start. Oops, I... I need it. So 32,000, right? Okay, so now we're going to go down here and we're going to do the bank rec starting with the updated cash book balance. So it says checks paid out but not yet presented to the bank. So checks paid out but, but not yet presented, those are unpresented checks. So we're going to add those. All right, so add unpresented checks. Uh, 12,000, right. Um, checks deposited but not yet credited by bank. So that was a, that's a bank lodgement. So we have to minus that. So less uh, bank lo lodgements, 15,000. And we have another item. What's that item, boy? Checks on hand, not yet deposited. Oh, so these are undeposited checks. So sometimes when people give you a check, um, it may be late in the day, maybe you can't go to the bank right then, or the check might, you might forget you have it. <laughs> <coughs> and what has to happen is, um, well, it's undeposited, so you can't get the money. So your cash book went up, but your bank statement won't reflect it because you didn't deposit the check. So this is just, it's like a bank lodgement, just an earlier state of a bank lodgement, I suppose, right? Undeposited checks, uh, 2,000. And we subtract it because like I said, it's basically like a bank lodgement. Okay, so 32 and 12 is 44, 15 and 12 is 17. 44 minus 17 is 27, I believe. And that is our balance as per bank statement. Right, so if anybody has any questions on any of these things, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, outro time. Okay guys, so that is how you prepare a bank reconciliation statement starting with the updated cash book balance. I know I just said it, but I'll say it again. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys and answering your questions. Okay, and I love knowing that people all over the world are benefiting from the videos I create. It, it really humbles me and I'm very, very happy to be of assistance. All right, guys. And anyhow, so once again, um, I, I remember my outro. So you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do if you have the correct mindset and you put in the work. You have to believe and you have to exert effort. There's no substitute for hard work and effort. And as is perfectly normal, you are bound to get some trouble at some point in them. There's, there are going to be things you don't know how to do, things you don't understand, things you don't want to do, and it's okay to ask for help. And if what you are doing isn't working, then you need to try a different approach to it. You're going to need to adapt because change is the only constant. And you know, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.